everyone in the world experiences fear um, for, for, from uh, you know, things that scare you. It's an emotion that you feel inside. Um, it's, um, you know that you're feeling anxious or feeling scared when you get changes like this that I mentioned. So your heart rate goes, starts racing, so you can feel your heart beating in your chest. Um, you might start sweating or trembling in your hands. Uh, you might feel that your breathing speeds up a little bit so that you're going breathing a bit faster rather than normal. Um, people will quite often say the stomach feels like it's churning around, um, that you, get, you feel like you can't digest your lunch properly, that you, you're not digesting it. And also feeling like you're very jumpy and your reactions are speeded up. All those are signs of anxiety. The other thing you get when you're anxious is you get changes in the brain as well. So um, when you become anxious, you'll notice that your attention starts to focus in on things that you're scared of. So for example, someone who's scared of spiders, the moment they see a spider, their eyes are right on it, um, following it around, watching whatever it's doing. If you're anxious about dogs, you'll tend to do the same, I imagine, if there's any dogs around. Um, when you're anxious, you also start to think anxious thoughts and you make predictions about what's going to happen. Um, so you start to worry about what might happen here, what's the worst that can happen. Um, quite often if you're feeling anxious, you'll start to get images, um, like the one you've got down there. Um, it's a little picture of it, I think it's, it's, you can't see it very well, it's a little dog um, nipping at somebody's trousers. So starting to get pictures of what might happen. Um, the other thing that happens, which is, uh, which is very important in relation to getting a phobia, is that when you get anxious, you start to believe that um, things are more likely to go wrong than in fact they are. So someone who's afraid of flying, if you ask them when they're in here, you know, how likely is it that a plane that you go on is going to crash? They'll say, oh, one in a million, that's really unlikely. If you put that person on a plane and it's roaring down the runway to take off and you ask them then, how likely do you think it is that this plane's going to crash? And they'll say, I'm sure it's going to crash. Um, it seems really likely. Um, all those things tend to make us then just more anxious. So that's, this is just a diagram showing where in the body um, anxiety affects you. And I don't know if you can read all of those, but it has an effect all over the body. Um, so you can tell if you're anxious, there's things like headaches, dizziness, feeling faint, feeling like things are unreal, tightness in your throat, pounding heart, butterflies in your stomach, um, pins and needles, cold hands, sweaty palms, tension in, in your muscles, feeling like your shoulders are all tense. Um, all those are signs of anxiety. Um, and there's a, there's a question though as to, because anxiety is not a very nice emotion, then one of the things that psychologists have investigated really is, well, why on earth does it exist at all? Why do we get scared? And uh, there's a very good reason for that, um, which is basically this, that um, we are all the descendants of people that spent a lot of their time running away from anything scary. And uh, if you think about it, the people that ran away and were real scaredy cats, they lived and they had children and we're their descendants. The people that didn't get scared of the wild mammoths got eaten or gored to death or didn't have a very nice time. So um, all, the, all the, the, the you know, people who were, who were easily scared of things, um, they were more likely to be successful in the past. And of course, what's the problem now with that is that there aren't any animals like that left. Um, that where we live, in, in Guernsey particularly, there's really nothing really that dangerous around. And so uh, the emo the, the, you know, getting scared about things isn't so much of a useful thing anymore, but that's why it happens. So that's why anxiety exists. Um, in terms of how phobias develop, uh, now this would be interesting actually to get a show of hands. Who can remember here having had a particular bad experience that set off being anxious about dogs? Okay, so it's, it's about half, about a third to a half of people. That's roughly what the research shows, that if you ask people who are afraid of things, can you remember a particular thing that set it off, about half of people say, yes, I can remember. The other half of people say, no, I, I, I can't. It, it just always seems to have been there, or it came on gradually. So bad experiences, we know, can set off a phobia. The other big thing, and this particularly applies to children, is that if you see someone else being very afraid around, um, around something, it can make you learn to be afraid about it as well. 
So in, in my work, where I work with children and families, I quite often see children who are afraid of something and when you ask their parents, are they anxious about it, they say, oh yes, I, I try not to show it, but I can't help it coming across and I know he's picked it up a little bit from me. Um, so that's another way that we can learn it. Um, the other thing is about um, in, in a situation where you're afraid of something, and this applies to if you're afraid of dogs, but if you're afraid of spiders or flying or any of the other common phobias, when you're in when you're around that thing, it tends to make you feel afraid. When you escape from it, when you get out, leave it, you're going to feel better. You can get that, you can f usually feel that real sense of just relief as you get out of it. And uh, the other thing that we know is that when you go through that cycle of being in, in the presence of the thing that makes you afraid and then getting out of it, it makes the fear worse. Um, and of course, if you are in, in a situation where you're really afraid of something, the, the thing you want to do is to get away from it. But each time you do that, it will tend to make the phobia a little bit worse. Um, the other thing that happens is that um, when we're in the presence of something we're afraid of, we tend to worry. We're looking out for things that might go wrong and, uh, and we have our imagination gets really active. Um, and that tends to make the thing seem more dangerous than it is and that will apply to anything that you're afraid of. Um, so I really don't like injections and a thing that happens if I know I've got to have an injection is I go over and over it in my mind, I imagine this enormous long needle about a foot long and, and this awful nurse that grabs my arm and stabs it in me and, and how awful it's going to be and by the time I arrive at the surgery to have an injection I'm just sweating and trembling and, and in a real state and, I, and, and I'm a psychologist and I'm trying to remind myself, no don't think about that, but it's hard not to. So those are some of the things that make a phobia go on and what we're going to be doing today is, to, is basically trying to do the opposite, which is to say, since exposure makes you feel afraid and, and escape makes you feel better and it's that that makes it worse, we're going to be doing the opposite, which is put yourself in a situation where you are going to feel slightly anxious, but just stay there. And in fact, the way that the brain works is automatically, without you having to do anything else, your fear will start to die down gradually by itself. You don't have to do anything else. The only probably extra thing you might have to do is if you find that you're worrying and your imagination is full of scary thoughts, you have to catch yourself doing that and say, no, stop doing that. You know, this is just, I'm just imagining the worst here. I just need to concentrate on what actually is happening, um, not what might be happening. <laughs>